Welcome to The Practical Intuitive, where each Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern, where host Robin Fritz explores mind, body, and spirit for the real world. Because we are all intuitives and healers, and we must all learn to love ourselves and live that love every day. Robin is a trained and certified intuitive and spiritual consultant and hypnotherapist with an international practice based in Seattle, Washington. As the practical intuitive, she covers personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice. It's all here. Readings, healings, and funny, warm, thought-provoking conversations. It's Robin Fritz, the practical intuitive, helping you mastermind body and spirit for the real world. No ifs, ands, buts, or BS ever. Welcome to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World. This is Robin Fritz. We're live in Seattle, Washington. And today we're going to do a follow-up on medical intuition and wellness. And then we are going to talk about the role of hurricanes in the world. So let's start the show quickly by leaping straight into a healing with the crystal phala and the citrine Lemurian quartz. Um, there's a lot of heavy things we want to talk about today, and we want to get the energy settled to have these conversations. So if you take a deep breath, imagine that you can connect to Fallon. However your intuition works the best, seeing, hearing, feeling, or knowing, we're going to get you grounded and balanced in this space with us today so that you can experience and benefit from the energy of this ancient power crystal. So if you take a deep breath, breathe straight into your solar plexus, feel it expand with healthy energy, and as you exhale, release what doesn't serve you. Breathe in and exhale, and take your attention to the top of your head. Here we're connecting mind, body, and spirit more tightly together, and as you breathe down your body, just feel your Body clearing energetically and filling up with healthy energy. Breathe down your face, your shoulders, your chest, your hips, your knees, and your feet. The top of your head to the bottom of your feet. And as you breathe up from the bottom of your feet, imagine the gold light that is Fallon just helping clear you and, and spike your intuition for this hour. Moving up from your feet, past your knees, your hips, your chest, your shoulders, your face, your third eye, and your crown chakra. Wide open to the energy healing today and to a deeper insight into your own intuitive and healing abilities. That's what I'm here for, to help you tap your own intuition and healing abilities. So this week, I would first like to bring back my sponsor of a show and a very, very brilliant naturopath and medical intuitive, Dr. Aubrey Wallace from up near Everett, Washington. Welcome, Dr. Wallace. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me on again. Hey, great. So um, I wanted to follow up with callers, um, people emailing, asking more, some more questions about medical intuition. So in our last session... We had a caller call in about celiac disease, and she had the benefit of both of us on the line. I saw a past life where she was punished for be, being basically a very powerful, intuitive, and healer, and starved to death. And you remarked that celiac disease was basically starvation of the cells, which I guess I hadn't realized, but I thought, wow, that's really bringing together your insight and my insight. So where does a person go after the medical intuition reading? How do you support them? What are the various ways that they can go in working with you? Um, well, it does. It usually does depend on what we get in the reading. So uh, the best, sure. uh, since I am an atropathic doctor, I do tend to refer people towards um, 
pursuing medical care for the condition if I uh, discover one uh, that needs support as far as dietary guidance or su supplemental guidance or um, homeopathic remedies that can help with uh, reestablishing the health in the body. Right. But obviously with that patient, um, uh, client, then past life regression would be the most direct approach yeah. to her getting at the core of her issue. So referral to you for doing that would be a, a very effective thing. And then I would work with her on understanding what the basic treatment for celiac is and how to pursue that um, until she's able to get under medical care for it. And, uh, yeah, I guess the past life regression is an issue there, and certainly um, certainly, I was, more, I was more thinking about the medical approaches, which is ironic, considering that's what I do is past life regression. But, you know, what's interesting is, you know, she brought up an issue. Celiac disease seems to be running rampant through, through the, our society right now, or basic gluten intolerance that doesn't advance to the really serious level of celiac disease, at least the people that I run into. So when you're looking at that as a medical intuitive, um, do you offer, are there similar approaches to each of these or is it all really kind of how you view what particular area? I mean, it's the gut area, but then there are other things that are influencing it. So Absolutely. how does that strike you? That's a great example, even especially because a lot of people do have gluten sensitivity. Um, and as a physician, I can look at them and say, you know, well, you need to be off of gluten and I can show you on a lab test that you're sensitive to it. Or we can show you on a lab test if you have celiac disease all the way. Um, right. It is highly correlated with autoimmune disease. So we look for it in those cases. But when, as a medical intuitive, what I find is that there are, are often different causes for that particular sensitivity. One of the most common is actually that gluten is a toxin um, because it's uh, very pesticide-laden and a GMO source uh, in the United States. So if the person is reacting to gluten because of the pesticides and the GMO aspect of it, then we look at it from a toxin level and do a detox with it on that level. Um, or sometimes people are just allergic to allergic to it, so their body is reacting to it as an allergy. And then in that case, we really need to look at well, you know, how do we calm your system down from having too much of an allergic response? And I have found personally, as a medical intuitive, that often people will develop either an allergic sort of response or a toxic level response in uh, relation to the emotional issue that's underlying. So some people, when they have an issue, say, with their family, will feel like when they go into their home family environment, they almost feel allergic to their family, whereas other people will feel like the family is literally toxic to them. <laughs> they have to get wow. out, right? So, um, <laughs> and I find that, yes, those underlying, those underlying emotions do tend to push people towards one direction or another. And sometimes there's a genetic predisposition, and that's a structural issue. So if I find that primarily on the medical institute of reading, then we have to really start working towards how to figure out for them via functional medicine usually what's the best, you know, what's the link, link in their chain that we need to try to buffer as far right. as uh, medicine. Yeah, so it's right. complicated. It, it is. You have a really tough job. I know um, I discovered um, functional medicine about five or so years ago, and that's when I heard about the MTHFR gene mutation, and I run across so many people with that. And when you talk about past life regression or medical intuition and family issues, you're also looking at people whose genetic history goes back to – Western and Northern Europe, and 40% of them have this gene defect, and it's like, well, where did that come from? You know, it, it's a real ancestral thing in our DNA, as well as, you know, having aspects of other things like emotional or, you know, sort of psychic connections. So it makes your job really hard. Well, and the medical intuitive part makes it a little bit easier because it's a very complicated system. So it's nice to be able to use my intuition to go in and see where do we start here. 
And you well, might it, find it interesting awesome. that those, yeah, the gene, the genetic like MTHFR, my intuitive take on those is those are those are actually, um, there are mutations that you have done to your ancestral DNA. You have, those are SNPs, which means that you went through and took all the bookmarks that your ancestors used for their DNA patterns and you changed them. So I think some of that is actually a, kind of a sign of evolving. <laughs> We're learning how to evolve our own DNA um, with epigenetic reactions from our environment. They aren't always positive, but sometimes the way that I think about it is that's direct evidence that we are, as a generation after generations, are evolving, that we're changing what our ancestors were originally doing with their DNA markers. Well, oh, that's an interesting perspective. But if you're changing it and then you develop illness as a result of the gene defect, how do you well, solve you it? Well, you would only develop um, – well, you have to – that's where functional medicine shines because you can see where people have particular gene mutations. And then it's not actually an illness as much with MTHFR as a misuse of the B vitamin. And actually there is no – with eating whole food diet and having some meat in the diet that covers the B vitamin, but actually taking folic acid as a supplement would cause the issue to be bad. So it's been supplementing our vitamins into our food in a non-natural way that's actually caused the illness aspect of that particular wow. issue. Wow, that's amazing. So, and maybe we're trying to evolve to eat more whole food diet. Maybe. If you can hang on after the break for just a minute, I'd like you to summarize for us what a person can do in coming to you for a medical intuition session. Thanks. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Home Times Radio. IOMFM. Change and growth are part of natural life and also part of your spiritual life. Everyone needs support and guidance, especially during life passages. Upgrade yourself with the Ohm Times Experts program. With Ohm Times Experts, you have access to the best intuitive coaches, spiritual teachers, counselors, astrologists, and oracles. Our team was carefully selected so you can trust. Find out more at experts.ohmtimes.com. This segment of The Practical Intuitive is brought to you by Terry Kent of amberstonepets.com. Years ago, Terry struggled with fleas and ticks on her four dogs but ruled out pesticides. Then she heard about raw Baltic amber. A fossilized tree resin, raw Baltic amber, has been used for years in Europe to protect cats and dogs from fleas and ticks. Terry founded AmberstonePets.com eight years ago to offer safe, organic, and beautiful pet collars that naturally repel fleas and ticks. How? The amber's aromatic properties are released into the pet's coat and spread by body oils from friction and body heat. The collars are available in several styles for cats and dogs, from kittens and puppies to giant breeds. Visit AmberstonePets.com, choose raw Baltic Amber collars for your pets, and enter Ohm Times at checkout for free shipping. Order today at AmberstonePets.com. I'm Fidel Nshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family, and then, boom! Everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee and they resettle you to America and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World. It's Robin Fritz. We're live in Seattle, Washington, and we're just wrapping up with Dr. Aubrey Wallace on naturopath on, and a medical intuitive on how medical intuition can support you. So what would you like people to know about 
getting in touch with you about a medical intuition session and the things that you can help them with? Um, thanks. Well, I think the place where I feel like I shine the best for people is when you have chronic conditions, often even with a diagnosis already, where you just haven't been able to get to a resolution of the illness or figure out there always feels like there's something more there that you're not quite getting to the cause of. Those are the people that I can help them most to help them narrow down where to start and what direction to go in. Also, people, um, I help a lot of people with uh, who have been opening to different intuitive and spiritual experiences um, and have medical conditions that are arising with those. That's, uh, that's another area where medical intuition seems to really be helpful in giving the people tools for moving forward in their own health journey using their own intuitive superpowers, essentially. Awesome. So tools like... Yeah homeopathic medicines, supplements, and mind-body-spirit connection. Absolutely. And honestly, in my readings, the main tool that the person gets is the body map that I draw for the person. Most of the patients that I work with will take home their body map, which is a map of the energy field and how each layer of the energy field um, is being represented for them, and guidance, direct guidance for each aspect, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. And they hang their picture up, and they just talk to it every day. Or some of them that's actually awesome. will change the picture as their health improves. Yeah, that's the primary tool. That's that's awesome. So it's really mind, body, spirit, medicine at work. So, Dr. Wallace, yeah. I want to thank you for joining us. And please tell people how to contact you. Um, thank you so much for having me on my show, on your show, Robin. It was wonderful to work with you. And um, the best way is through our website, www.lovebeingyou.info. Um, or phone is 425-595-5892. Great. Thank you for joining us. And please note, too, that if you hurry and call her this week, you can get 15% off a medical intuition reading. So thank you for joining us, Dr. Wallace. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Thank you. So now I would like to move into a different subject. So at the beginning of the my first show uh, in June, I said that as we got into hurricane season this year or experienced a hurricane in the United States, I would talk about the role of hurricanes in keeping the planet healthy and balanced. I didn't look ahead to hurricane season when I said that, and um, it's appropriate now to talk about hurricane season, even with the advent of a gigantic hurricane in Texas. With Hurricane Harvey's arrival in last weekend, I'd say it's time to talk about what the role of hurricanes is in the world and how I know that. So in the aftermath of a massive Category 4 hurricane, we are rightly upset and concerned for our fellow citizens who not only experience landfall, but are <clears throat> suffering from wind, storm surge, rain, thunderstorms, and even tornadoes. So no right-thinking human, no one who truly holds love as a first principle in life, wants anyone or any being to suffer. No one, like me or like the Om Times listeners, wants anyone to suffer. And we all know that everything is alive, including hurricanes. So we want every being to be perfectly happy and safe always. But in the aftermath of storms, especially storms on this scale, we as humans tend to think in human terms, so we think of them as evil or horrible or something to deflect. But that's not really what hurricanes are all about. So when we live through them or even see them approaching, we hear phrases like the hurricane destroyed or killed or damaged or whatever, all phrases indicating that the hurricane is some evil being that is somehow responsible for the disaster. Now, no one wants people, animals, buildings, or anything, land or sea, to suffer. No one. Least of all the hurricane, or me, or any of any of our listeners. But what happens with a hurricane, as with any event, is what happens. It's not the fault. 
It's the consequence of the work. In this case, the work that a hurricane was created to do. So I'm about to tell you what the true role of a hurricane is. And it's not something I made up. It's something that I experienced in my work as an intuitive which means that I work with weather and land systems and I work with the beings who create these weather and land systems. And they're the ones who taught me what these beings do. And um, I have to admit, I was completely astonished to learn these things. So there are two things on the planet that really determine our fate. Our, the life of the planet. One of them is volcanoes, and I talked about that in an earlier show when I talked about Mount St. Helens saying that volcanoes hold the earth and the sky. The other is a hurricane, and the role of a hurricane is to moderate our climate. Without hurricanes, our planet will freeze to death. So how do I know this? Well, I learned from literally being trained to work with wind and land and weather systems by what I call the hurricane bosses or the hurricane guidance forces. Like us, hurricanes are alive. They're souls. They have consciousness. They have rights and responsibilities, jobs to do, and they have a choice, free will, a choice as to whether to do the job or not. The other thing is that hurricanes are literally created on a schedule. So if one hurricane is somehow not doing its job, the hurricane behind it has to change to do its job as well as the hurricane before it in order for the plan that was set in motion for the planet for that year, so to speak, happens. I know this is like, wow, did how do we not know this? Well, in some respects, we do kind of know this. So hurricanes are responsible for the welfare of the planet. So in that sense, they're massive cleansing forces, and their job is to keep us alive. So let me tell you what hurricanes have said to me about people and their role on the planet. And then we'll go back and talk about the hurricanes I learned from and what science has learned and can learn more about how hurricanes work. So after the, I first started talking to hurricanes accidentally in 2004 with the arrival of Hurricane Charlie in Florida. And I was literally just watching it on TV, just like, wow, I was watching the news coverage. And I was struck because the newscaster and all those people, I don't know why they go to those places and stand out there and get, get whipped around by a storm, but they do. And as the person was reporting, there was a little bush whipping back and forth at, on the ground at his feet. And behind the guy, a, a roof blew off the building behind it. And I was like, all of a sudden I realized what hurricanes were for. And I went, oh my gosh, Hurricane Charlie, you're amazing. And back came this voice, my name is not Charlie, it is Hawoosh. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, did that hurricane just talk to me? And like, what is that all about? So over the course of 2004 and 2005, I had a series of conversations with different hurricanes. And between the next few hurricanes that happened in 2004, the hurricane bosses, so to speak, stepped in and started talking to me about what they do and what people need to do. So let me tell you what they're telling people to do, and then we'll go back and hang in there with me while we talk about this. So they asked that people, okay, we're talking about the United States here, that people get out and away from coastlines in the south and the east, especially the Everglades region, and let the hurricanes do the job of cleansing the land and the sea. They want people to congregate in cities and leave large areas of the land and sea open for cleansing. They've asked us to 
basically reduce our population because there are too many people on the planet to support and they've asked people to clean up after themselves in or in other words to be proper citizens of the planet so this is what they say for themselves and what they're saying is that we're not responsible or aware enough of how the planet really works so we're not really doing our part as equal citizens of the planet well all that means is what we already all know, that we need to take care of our planet, clean up after ourselves, be proper citizens. And there's been a huge movement in the years since this was first told to me in 2004. A huge movement towards being green, um, taking care uh, of our garbage, recycling, you know, population control in terms of you know how many people can our family support and growing healthier food and all of the things that you know are really we're stepping up to be proper citizens of the planet so um what does this mean for us well it means that we might start thinking of hurricanes and other natural events as things and living beings that have a purpose and to understand what that purpose is. And I stumbled over it accidentally in talking with a hurricane and then getting involved with the hurricane bosses. And it's very hard for Americans right now and, and those other people in the world who are paying attention to what's happening in Texas. It's very hard to pull back from our natural horror and fear of the after effects and simply bless a storm on its way to help it by just saying we we bless you on its way because we're horrified at what it looks like so we'll come back after the break and talk a little bit more about this Conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Join Vibe Nation radio host, international psychic medium, Carrie Turcotte, as she guides her listeners to rediscover themselves by accessing the keys of knowledge that already exist within. Each week's show is divinely orchestrated to intertwine with the universal energies, allowing the listeners to go deeper within. At the end of each show, Carrie will tap into the energies of the listeners and give a message from Spirit about the upcoming week. If you really want to get to know who you truly are, join Carrie each Monday at 3 p.m. on Vibe Nation Radio. This segment of the Practical Intuitive is brought to you by Aubrey Wallace, MD. Whether you have a chronic health issue or simply want to feel your best and be your best, consider an appointment with Dr. Aubrey Wallace, a naturopathic physician and medical intuitive with an international practice near Seattle, Washington. A third generation healer, Dr. Wallace uses her extensive training and an intuitive approach to help her patients find what's really keeping them from the healthy, balanced lives they deserve. Her compassionate approach treats the whole patient, body, mind, and spirit, using therapies from homeopathic medicines to energy healing. She helps you as her patient to love being you. Dr. Wallace works in person or by Skype. Learn more about her work at lovebeingyou.info. Mention this ad and receive 15% off a medical intuition session. That's Dr. Aubrey Wallace at lovebeingyou.info. Today we decided to walk to school. The light counted. 15, 14. 31? I mean, 13? We took a left on Carroll Street. Danny's smart, but he gets distracted. He realized he forgot his homework. I hope he doesn't have another bad day at school. 
When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. That's why there's understood.org, a free resource for the parents of the one in five kids with learning and attention issues. Go from misunderstanding to understood.org. Brought to you by Understood and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World. It's Robin Fritz. We're live in Seattle, Washington, and we're talking about the role of hurricanes in the world. Now, I want to say that I personally know the terror and loss and the fear that comes after a major Earth event. And there's nothing that I personally or anyone in the whole country and perhaps the world who knows about this None of us want the people of Texas to suffer. That's not what I'm talking about in the role of a hurricane. And I grew up, I know about, I've lived through volcanic eruptions, a tornado, an earthquake, a hurricane, major storms, long stretches of drought. I know what it's like to suffer from events. I don't want anyone to suffer, including myself. But... I also know that most of us, and as as is amply demonstrated this week in Texas, that we're out there helping our fellow humans. And those of us at home times, listeners who are here know that we can offer our love and support, and that is a huge benefit. So, but... We need to start thinking about these events in terms of what they were created to do and not how we think of them, as we're used to thinking of these things as harming us. And in fact, the planet is alive because hurricanes are there doing their jobs. So we're not being threatened by them. They have jobs to do. And what we may want the world to be very peaceful and not have anything wrong and have the climate absolutely perfect and rain and sun at the times that we need to Um, we also want the planet to survive and this is how it was set up not by us but by all of the beings that came together to create this amazing planet that we live on so how do i know about this back in 2005 there was a small hurricane bouncing off the east coast of the united states hurricane was hurricane ophelia And um, by then, I had been talking with hurricanes off and on since 2004. So I was curious whenever I saw a hurricane acting, what meteorologists would say is erratically, I was always like, oh, hey, would you like to have a conversation? And Hurricane Ophelia did. And in 10 minutes, she explained to me what hurricanes do in the world. So a geography lesson. Hurricane Ophelia was off the coast of the east east coast of the United States, Atlantic Ocean, and she was showing me what hurricanes do. And by and she was showing me, okay, so intuitively she was giving me a picture, and this picture was of this big woman stirring a pot of soup that was getting thicker and thicker and thicker, and it was she was having a really hard time stirring this pot of soup and I was like okay um, so I don't quite get it so she started to explain that it had to do with the Gulf Stream now the Gulf Stream originates in the Gulf of Mexico which is where Hurricane Harvey picked up strength uh, landed on the coast of Texas and is now turning around and going back over the Gulf of Mexico for a second landfall but that Gulf Stream flows from the Gulf of Mexico down around Florida, up the east coast of the United States, and all the way to Greenland. So, well, and they're up there. And because the Gulf Stream flows like it does, it carries warm water. But the problem is that the Gulf Stream is slowing down. And that was the stucky stuck soup the thick soup that the hurricanes were trying to resolve so um the idea is that we talk about global warming as a problem and i keep saying it's not global warming that's the problem we're we're dealing with an ice age and that's what the hurricanes if the hurricanes are afraid of an ice age we all need to be afraid of it because The hurricanes were created then 
in 2004 and 5 and have been throughout history to keep the Gulf Stream moving. And as those winds and the ocean whips through the Gulf Stream and agitates and moves up to the Atlantic coast and up north, it keeps the Gulf Stream moving up. And as it slows down, that warm current of air of water slows down and it freezes. And as it freezes, all of northern Europe and all of us freeze with it. And so they were coming in increasing frequency to keep the Gulf Stream moving. Okay, so I was like shocked to hear this and have this explained to me. And what was really interesting was that several months later, a article came out in a scientific magazine that had evaluated 30 years of scientific research on current flows of hurricanes, wind patterns from West Africa across the Atlantic Ocean, and they had come to the same conclusion. 30 years of research that I learned from a hurricane in 10 minutes. And here's where I wish scientists would match up with people like me who can communicate with these beings because they could have asked the questions that I didn't have the knowledge to ask because I'm not a climate scientist. And we could have maybe even gotten more answers from the hurricanes than I got from Hurricane Ophelia. But it was very clear that she had given me all the information that scientists had taken 30 years to find. So we don't have the time to waste to learn about what these beings can do. And, you know, when you think about it, it's amazing that the planet is set up like this for these hurricanes to keep the planet moving the the Gulf Stream moving so the planet stays warm enough and doesn't freeze and we all die. It's amazing. It's not fun to watch the aftermath. It's it's not fun to be in Texas right now. But they have a job to do and that's their job. And as humans looking at it, maybe maybe it helps or doesn't help to know that this is what they're created to do and that's what they're what they're doing. So let me back up a little bit more and, um, and talk about some of the concerns. So if hurricanes are coming in increasing frequency to keep the Gulf Stream from slowing down, where have they been for the last 12 years? And we've all heard rumors about the government interfering with the course of hurricanes. And that's scary if they're there to keep us alive and not to kill us. And um, and what happens if we interfere with them? So I'm pretty much a person who thinks everything is equal on the planet. This is my experience from all the different beings that I work with, whether they're hurricanes or volcanoes or wind systems or even just growing plants in a garden. You know, everything has a job to do. And um, and hurricanes have a job to do. So. All of us can affect them. We can affect them by how we think about them and how we respond to them. Just like anything, if if you said to another person, I hate you or go away, you know, the energy of that feeling just acts like a door slamming in your face. It stops you in your tracks. And that's what happens every time we approach a natural event with the fear that we have. A natural fear, because we all want to be comfortable and none of us want to be hurt and none of us want to lose our homes or even be inconvenienced. I mean, that's that's perfectly fine and natural. That's the way we are. We want comfortable lives. But anytime, um, and I, as I've always said too, we're all intuitives and healers, so we naturally have the ability to affect other things just as they have the ability to affect us. What I've struggled with is that humans have more of an ability to affect other beings than other beings do. So if you say, I hate you, hurricane, or go away, or slow down, a hurricane will have a tendency to listen to you. And if you're an energy worker that says, don't have this and don't let this hurricane come near shore don't let it come over land uh, we don't want it to hurt our homes or interfere with us in any way 
you're stopping the forward momentum of those hurricanes. And by doing that, we keep them from doing their jobs. And um, and we have a few minutes here before the break for me to explain a little bit more about how I know that. So when I talked with Hurricane Charlie back in 2004, and he said, well, that's not my name. My name is Hawoosh. And I was like, wow, I can talk with a hurricane. I started paying attention, and Florida was really being um, inundated with weather events that summer of 2004, and with good reason, as I learned out later, because the Everglades are important to the health of our planet and certainly the health of our country, and their hurricanes are there to cleanse. They cleanse the ocean and the land that they go over, and they're created in a pattern. So the pattern is what matters. And so what happened next was a hurricane was coming again to Florida, and that hurricane's name was Francis, as we called it. And so in my ignorance, I said, well, Hurricane Francis, you know, and then she starts talking to me. And I said, well, the people in Florida have really, you know, been hit hard by all this rain and by the hurricanes and so on. Do, do you think you could slow down? And she's like, well, I want to be as big as that next, that other guy, meaning Hurricane Charlie, which is a huge category for a hurricane, I think, category four. And... um I said, well, you're already that big out clear out in the ocean, but, you know, the people in Florida have really suffered. Do you think you could slow down? And she grumbled a little bit, and um, and I didn't really hear anything until I saw on the news that the newscaster were going, wow, all of a sudden, people, Hurricane uh, Francis came to the Florida shore and slowed down. We weren't expecting that. So let me tell you what happened next after the break. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Humanity Healing International is a small nonprofit with a big dream. Since 2007, HHI has been working tirelessly to bring help to communities with little or no hope. Our projects are not broad mandates, nor are they overnight solutions, but they bring the reassurance that no one is alone and that someone cares. To learn more, please visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hi, I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. This segment of The Practical Intuitive is brought to you by Rosie Gremert at ICanDoHardThings.com. When was the last time nothing was holding you back? physically or emotionally, from the good you want to do for yourself and for the world. If you want to feel great and make it last, Rosie Grimmert will use her decades of experience and expertise as a certified essential oil therapist, certified holistic health coach, and certified grief support specialist. To create the best version of you, just email rosie at icandoheartthings.com and put ohm times in the subject line. You'll get access to Rosie's exclusive I Can Do Hard Things 30-Day Courage Dare and get 25% off all purchases. That's rosie at icandoheartthings.com. You're not wired to have a response to this sound. You're neutral to it, and you can hear it repeatedly without feeling anything. But when we introduce a new stimulus, save the food. We've achieved pulling a natural or inborn response from you. Save the food, because 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. Save the food. Cook it, store it, 
share it. Just don't waste it. For tips and recipes, visit savethefood.com. Brought to you by NRDC and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World. It's Robin Fritz, and I'm trying to summarize the role of hurricanes in the world. So, in August of 2004, I talked with Hurricane Charlie. I was surprised. It was an accident. I didn't know you could talk to hurricanes. But then I experimented by talking with Hurricane Francis later in August, asking her to slow down because I thought, well, I don't want people in Florida hurt. And, you know, maybe Hurricane Francis would listen to me. So when Hurricane Francis roared up and stopped on the coast of Florida, I was like, oh, my gosh, she listened to me. And I said, oh, Hurricane Francis, thank you. And then I heard the words no one ever wants to hear, as that's when I learned about the hurricane bosses or the guidance forces or the gods of the hurricanes, whatever you want to call it. The words were, yes, and these are the consequences. And I tell you people, I was horrified. (laughs) There were consequences to asking a storm to slow down. And I clearly did not know what I was doing. And that's why I'm sharing this so that the rest of us don't have to make the mistakes that I made. As a result, of asking Hurricane Francis to slow down, that request from a human had power and it altered her course. She was originally intended, as they showed me, to go swing into Florida and circle on up to North Carolina. Instead, the forward momentum was slowed and she bounced her way across the Florida Peninsula and dropped tons and tons of rain. There was another consequence to that, as they showed me as I was there watching it, and I could feel this energy moving at my feet, and I went to look at the map, and I saw another hurricane coming. This hurricane was supposed to go to the east coast of the United States, but instead, because human fear altered the course of Hurricane Francis, this hurricane came into the Gulf of Mexico. A Category 3 hurricane, the Gulf of Mexico, the southern coast of the United States. But it had to alter to get to North Carolina. And a Category 3 hurricane became a Category 5. And that was Hurricane Ivan. So that was my summer of learning what human misunderstanding can do when we're not partnering and understanding how the planet operates. I, you know, I don't understand. I, I, that's what I do. I don't understand how I got this job. It's just something that happened. But I do know what the role of hurricanes is in the world. And that's to keep us all alive, the planet too. And if hurricanes are worried about the Gulf Stream slowing down, that should be something we're worried about too. And we are, because that's why everybody's talking about global warming when in fact they mean an ice age coming. And that's why we're all working really hard to be really good planetary citizens. And that's why when we're looking at hurricanes today, I hope it gives you a better understanding of how absolutely magnificent our planet is and how easy it is to alter what happens. So the hurricanes were very upset with me, the hurricane bosses. They said, listen, read a book. We can't teach you everything. So this is what I would say to anyone who's interested in how the planet lives and how these events occur and what's going on is that when you see something like this coming or Superstorm Sandy in 2012 or some of these other large events that come towards our shores or to other places around the world, What we want and what we think we need is not what the planet is not necessarily what the planet needs. And so if we use our energy healing abilities, which we all have, or our enhanced abilities that come from training through any kind of an energy system, and we say, stay away from shore or slow down. What we've done is what I did back in 2004 accidentally without even realizing it, and that's to alter the course of an event. So the hurricane bosses literally invited me to go to what I call hurricane school, 
And for a week, I spent time out on the beach and just learning how air moved and how air affected waves and storms. And it was fascinating. And I teach that and I, when I teach my intuitive workshops. I take people out on the street and teach them about air. And it's just amazing that we don't really think about these things unless we get into that kind of a, a class or you listen to this story, which I know sounds incredible and like, oh, my God, I sound crazy. But actually, I know that the listeners here are broad minded and open minded enough to go, oh, my gosh, I just never really thought about it that way because I did not until these beings actually started talking to me. So here's what I would like to say to everyone today. We can still, and we always do, affect the world around us. So when we say we don't want this to happen or we don't want that to happen, understand that as a human being, we have a very powerful effect on other beings, including hurricanes. So if you say, stay away, or I hate you, or whatever, which is a normal feeling because we don't want anybody hurt, including ourselves, that acts as an energetic block and that can impede the work that the hurricane was created to do. They are very powerful beings who live very short lives. They are created on a schedule every year by the hurricane bosses, so to speak. So, as I told you in the story, when I accidentally, when I unthinkingly interfered with Hurricane Francis, I also interfered with Hurricane Ivan coming along behind it. And so it terrifies me to think about what we're doing on a scientific basis to alter alter hurricanes, seeding clouds or creating the rumored structures that are trying to alter the course of them. Each hurricane, just like us, has a job to do and a choice to do its job, just like we do, free will. So I would say to all of you who are healers, as we all are, and all of you who are concerned about what's happening in Texas right now, to send peace and love to that area to try to withhold judgment about how bad we feel or how horrified we are at the circumstances and take a deep breath and open yourself up to simply accepting the role of this hurricane and allowing it to do its work and then we'll clean up afterwards and it's horrible but that is the role of these beings on the planet and the energy of that movement and the energy of your love as a community and your acceptance and understanding that we live in a broader world that we're only beginning to really understand. These are souls. We're souls too. And we're all in it together. We're all here to help heal the planet. So if you have any questions about this, I would be happy to address them in future shows. I know this is a lot of information today, and I know we are all very upset. So I thank you for joining us today, and I'd like to invite you to experience other things that we can experience together in upcoming workshops. Um, next week, Tips to Be Your Best Self. We're also in September that's September 7th, September 14th, Working and Healing with Crystals. It'll be an amazing time, and we'll, I'll be sharing a lot of crystals on a webinar. And then Thursday, September 25th, 21st, um, Resolving Grief and Connecting with Our Dead. So today I'd like you, at the end of this, we always, at the end of each show, we always do an energy healing from the goddess. So let's do energy healing of our fear and the fear and the danger that is facing our loved citizens in Texas today and through the rest of the week as more rain comes, as the flooding increases, to understand how we can create cities and areas in the country that are that we can live in and that can support the land as well. Let's do this energy healing with the goddess. Cross your hands together and put them on your heart. And as you just breathe in, just breathe in how magnificent the planet is and how we are helping our fellow citizens by sending them love and support on an energy level to keep them healthy through this, to help the rescuers and first responders helping 
to admiring them, the citizens, for helping each other. And hold your hands in front of your mouth. Breathe into your palms of your hands, which are healing centers themselves. And then just turn your palms outward and let that energy go where it will to support the remnants of this hurricane, to support the people in Florida, in Texas, in Louisiana, all of those places, and all around the world who are experiencing tropical storms at this time. And then cross your hands again. Cross your hands on your chest. And breathe that in. Breathe in love and acceptance for yourself. The awe of learning how amazing our planet is and how it works without us even knowing how it works. Breathe into your palms and then put your palms back on your chest. Giving yourself strength and support. Thank you for joining me today. You can email me for services at Robin, R-O-B-Y-N, Robin at RobinFritz.com, R-O-B-Y-N, F-R-I-T-Z. Intuitive consultations, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, soul progression clearing, energy healing. Peace and all to peace and best wishes to all of you. Thank you for joining me today. Goodbye. Thank you.